Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time to do a review of Google's latest Chromebook, the Pixelbook Go. And there's a few things I want you to keep in mind going forward into this review. First of all, Google just released their not pink color. So there are two color options, this black and the not pink now. Second of all, at CES, Samsung actually unveiled a very high-end Chromebook. It is a starts at $1,000. It's called the Galaxy Chromebook from Samsung. And I think the partnership between Samsung and Google making this Chromebook actually speaks to the commitment Google has towards Chrome OS. Google also announced, this is the third thing, that they will be supporting Chromebooks that are past 2020 or come out in 2020, up to eight years of support so it's one of those where they look at it as an investment of the consumer that will get support throughout the years and actually last that long. With those three things in mind, the Pixelbook Go is actually a little less price. It starts at $650. So for a Chromebook, still kind of a high price tier in my opinion. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into the full review of the Pixelbook Go. The Pixelbook Go comes in multiple models. Google sent over the i5, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage model for review. So that's what I've been testing out on. When it comes to design of the Pixelbook Go, I think it looks a little plain in my opinion. If you do go with the pink, it's gonna give it a little more flash, but especially when you compare it to the original Google Pixelbook, which I think had an amazing design aesthetically and just in general. However, they are different price points, so they are going to be developed differently. But in my opinion, when you look at it, it's just, a little plain. Down at the bottom, Google decided to add some ridges to it. They also have two long strips, which are rubberized grips, which will help it from not sliding around. So not just in the four corners, all the way across. But with the ridges, it actually is easier to hold on, adds a little bit of grip. You're not gonna really see it that often because when you use it, it's gonna probably be flat on a table because it doesn't flip all the way around. Now the ridges themselves kind of look a little bit like a George Foreman grill that I owned a little bit ago. However, I will say that this laptop has never uncomfortably heated up, so I was never really able to grill anything on it. The Go will collect some grease and fingerprints over time, so you will kind of have to wipe it off. I left some on just so you can kind of see how that is. On the left side, you do have USB-C slot, a headphone jack, and on the right side, another USB-C slot. Both can be used for charging. The Go also passes the one-handed lid opening test with ease. A couple things that are a bit of a bummer on the Pixelbook Go is that there's no face and lock integration. There's also no fingerprint scanner. So you're gonna have to type in your pin or password every time you wanna sign into that Pixelbook. Also, it does not flip into tablet mode. You would think Pixelbook Go, it'd be like, take it on the go. You can flip into tablet mode and walk and use it as a tablet, but that's not really the case, especially because the original Pixelbook was a two-in-one that you could flip all the way around. So a little interesting that they decided to just go with that laptop shape. The Go has a 13.3 inch 1080p touchscreen display, and I've actually been very happy with it. I'm a little bummed it didn't go with a 2K display. You can pay for a 4K display. However, the price of it, I think is about $1,400 if you want that 4K display. So a little high, especially when you're gonna buy a Chromebook, that seems really high. But again, wish they went with the 2K display, but they didn't, so 1080p, but I have been happy with the 1080p display in general in terms of colors and how bright it's gotten. While I review devices, I like to make notes as I'm using them throughout the term. So I went through my notes and under trackpad, all I put was okay. And that essentially defines what I feel about this trackpad is that it's just okay, pretty standard trackpad. Now on the other hand, let's talk about that keyboard. In my opinion, I really like the sound of those hush keys that Google has come out with, especially because I'm out in public a lot, so I don't really wanna annoy people by typing super loudly on my keyboard. And it's super satisfying to type on. I don't know how to explain it. I actually didn't think that they would be able to top the original, original Pixelbook's keyboard, but they have with these hush keys on the Pixelbook Go, one of my favorite keyboards to type on on a laptop. 
The keyboard's not crazy clicky and there's not too much of travel, but there's something about it. There's a little bit of grip to the keyboard and it's just very satisfying to type on. The keyboard's also backlit at different levels. All you really have to do is press and hold Alt and change the screen brightness keys and that'll change the backlighting to that keyboard. The Pixelbook Go's battery life has been good. Google says you're gonna get around a 12 hour average. I find that I get a little bit less than that, around 10 and a half to 11 hours of average use. And that gets me through a full day, whether I'm working on it all day, I do bring it on a lot of trips with me, so maybe I wanna watch some Netflix, anything like that. So I've been happy with battery life on the Pixelbook Go. The Go does have two front firing speakers next to the keyboard. And when it comes to volume, it actually gets really loud. I've been happy with that. And when it comes to quality, I would say middle of the road. It does lack some bass, I think, because of the smaller size. And yes, the Pixelbook Go does have Chrome OS, which, of course, is not as good as Windows. It's not as good as Mac OS but it satisfies a lot of people's needs. Some people don't need all of the applications you can install on either of those operating systems. Of course, you're not gonna be doing any really hardcore gaming on a Pixelbook Go, so if you don't need a laptop for that, you might wanna get a Chromebook or a Chrome OS laptop. This Chrome OS does have a couple benefits. You know, it starts up a little bit faster from sleep and from shutdown, and of course, it'll have a little bit better battery life. But aside from that, you're gonna be able to do more in the other operating systems, and you just really need to look at your use case if you just want a Chrome browser essentially as your laptop. The Pixelbook Go has a lot of Google Assistant integration. It has a dedicated key. You can activate it with your voice. So that's actually really nice. But again, I might have a phone in my pocket that I could do that with, so I don't necessarily need it on my laptop, but it is nice not having to re pull out your phone in your pocket to activate the Google Assistant and you can look up different things that are synced with your Google account. There's also a nice what's on my screen option. So if you have a page full of different things that you wanna look up, you can say what's on my screen, it'll scan through it and show off uh, maybe definitions or places and things like that. With all of that being said, I'm a big fan of the Pixelbook Go. I really like that keyboard specifically. Typing on it has been great. The bezels could be a little bit more minimal. The design could be a little bit better, but Again, usability, it's very light, it's very portable, it's nice to type on, but it is a little bit too pricey, I think. Uh, especially the model I tested, I think it's $850 for this model. Just a little bit too high in my opinion. I think Google needs to lower their price point, not only on these, but maybe even their phones as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the review of the Pixelbook Go. Drop a comment, let me know what you think about the device. Be sure to subscribe as well, a lot more content to come. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.